All right, good evening, everybody. Thank you for joining Live Fully tonight. I am Chris Dravenstadt, and we have Morgan and Curtis on with us right now, and hopefully we'll have some people that will be joining in a bit. I know that um, there's a lot of people that are coming off of our New Year's kickoff event that was in Phoenix last week, well, this past weekend, last week, um, and are just kind of getting back into the groove. And so um, happy Martin Luther King Day to everyone. I know there's a lot, people might have a lot going on with that as well. Um, and so tonight, what I wanted to talk about is, is your why, um, is really looking at what is behind your why. And when I first started Isogenics uh, as a business, I had watched Peta Kelly's video, and this was one that she had actually done at probably a New Year's kickoff or a celebration event. Um, many, several years ago, at least. I, I, I don't know what year it was exactly, maybe 2014, I'm thinking, but um, it, I saw her present on your why and why it's important to be so clear on, you know, why, um, what's going to hold you to continue to, to stick with this network marketing business when times get tough and you know it takes time to build and um so it was really all um kind of focused and centered around building your business um but what i'm running into personally and morgan and i actually chatted about this a little bit this afternoon is there's a why for or at least there, there can be, and there probably should be, a why for just about anything that you really set your mind to when it comes to making a change. And last week we talked about, you know, the power of being able to change your mind. And um, if something doesn't resonate with you anymore, if you feel like you're not in alignment or not in integrity, um, with something that it is perfectly okay to say, you know, that's, that's not, that's not me anymore. There's, you know, I have a new, a new direction that I'm going in, or I have new beliefs um, that are more rewarding for me now is, is what we talked about. And so now um, I just wanted to share because this group is all about, you know, support and being real and, and vulnerable and just wanted to share a little bit about, um, you know, I'm, I'm right smack dab in the middle of my, the first isobody challenge that I've ever stuck to um, for more than about a week, <laughs> um, two maybe. Um, but you know, I'll start the ISO body challenge. It's usually at an event when everybody else is all geeked up and super excited and raring to go. And then, you know, a week or two later, it's like, eh, I don't, what, you know, what am I doing this for? Um, and so right now I'm, I'm in week eight actually this week will be week eight of 16. And I've already gone through one deception phase where I just really just don't feel like working out. I don't feel like doing two shakes a day. Um, I don't feel like counting my macros today and how much protein I've had and how much carbs I've had. Um, but deception can come more than once when we're making changes and, and approaching change. And um, so I'm in another one <laughs> right now. And um, I just, what I started thinking about was how important it is to really attach to, well, first of all, how important it is to write down what your why is. So why did I want to be the Isobody champion in the first place? I mean, at Casey's Hilton Head Retreat, you know, back in, in November was when I made the decision to do it. And I was geeked up and it was really about pushing myself, proving, kind of proving to myself that I could actually get in my, get my body into the best physical shape it's ever been in. Um, 
and was ready to just make some changes that were not serving me um, with regard to sleep, with regard to just poor eating and eating, you know, junk food um, because it was easy and and I just I didn't really care. Um, but what I didn't do is write down why it was important for me to to win. And so today I had this conversation with Morgan and um and also with Casey about like is this deception or is this something you know do I really want this? Um and and our brains because what they're so programmed to keep us in a state of normal of you know this is what you like to do because we've done it over and over again for 47 years, right? When you do something different, obviously that's going to be a challenge to your brain. And so, um, you know, what I'm running into now is those questions that are coming up. Like, do I really want to keep doing this? Do I want to push through? And it's so critical to under to go back to what was it in the beginning that that made me want to to get started with this. And so. You know, we, we can relate it to losing 50 pounds. We can relate it to losing 100 pounds. Everyone's excited and motivated in the beginning. Um, but then after, you know, you've done the routine for two weeks and then four weeks and then six weeks and then eight weeks, um, you know, it's just, it's so normal to want to just shift back to to where we were before and start to question why why am i doing this you know do i really do i really want this and unless we've really you know dug deep and written those reasons down and gotten some really good clarity around what the reasons are it is so easy to get pulled back in the other direction and say, you know what? It just doesn't feel that important for me today. And then today turns into tomorrow and tomorrow turns into next week because there's no anchor. Oh, look, I have an anchor right there <laughs> behind me. There's no, there's nothing that's anchoring us into that why if we haven't written down what it is. And so I whipped out an old 90 day game plan because, you know, every event that someone gets on stage, they, it's somebody new that gets up and talks about, you know, make sure you know what your why is. And again, you know, typically it's, it's related to, um, to do an isogenics as a, as a business. But when it comes to our just personal goals, I, I joined, I recently joined another group, um, that we were all asked to, um, this is a, a group that's going to meet once a week for two months, but we were all asked to write down, why are you here? Why did you decide to, to, to join this group and to devote the next, you know, however many days throughout the next two months to this program? Because otherwise, if something else comes up, if I don't know very specifically why I'm choosing to put my time there, my time and my effort and my energy, my focus, then it's going to be really easy for something else to come in and divert my attention. And something that I read when I pulled out um, this, the 90 day game plan was a question that says set it under setting yourself up for success. And it says, we all want to spend more time with family and friends enjoying our why rather than spending precious time doing the things we feel we, quote unquote, have to do. So what are those things? I mean, that's the, the, the question that I really want to dive into tonight, that like where it comes to you, all of, all of you guys that are on this call, for me, it's the Ice of Body Challenge right now. It's pushing through. I'm in the middle of this challenge. I'm actually going to have to do maintenance photos before celebration, which means I'm going to need to do two challenges back to back. So this is not, this is like you're in it for the long haul. But then I had a, a, a chat with Alvi who said, Chris, 
it's not one challenge. It's not two challenges. Like this is a part of your identity. This is, this is who you, who you want to become that you're currently not. Right. And so I think about when I lost a hundred pounds with gastric bypass surgery, just because I lost that hundred pounds, I mean, half of it came back within about three years because that still wasn't who I was. Like I hadn't, I hadn't attached to why it was important to keep that weight off. And so it came back because all of those things that distracted me, that diverted my attention were, it, they were able to, um, and it was pretty easy. For, for my attention to get, you know, diverted back to food, back to alcohol, back to things that weren't good for me because I didn't, I, I didn't have a why. I didn't know what a why was back then. So now that I do know what it is, um, you know, I'm thinking about this phase that I'm in, this deception phase right now with the isopody challenge that I'm halfway through, but I didn't, um, I've got this little book, my 16 week journal of the ice of body. You guys, it hasn't been cracked open. Like in order, like to be all in, you know, I'm counting my macros. I'm working out every day. I'm doing two shakes a day. I'm doing, but, but I, I haven't written down why this is important to me to win. Is it to prove something to myself? Is it because I want to inspire people? around the globe? Is it because I want to share with people like what has changed my life? Like it needs to be written down because when these times creep in, it's like, okay, Chris, here's what's happening. Your, your attention's getting diverted. Your brain wants to pull you back into saying this is not important, but there's nothing that's anchoring me. I'm not worth it, nothing. But I haven't, I haven't really dug deep and, and written out, like, what's going to keep me from jumping ship for the fourth time or the fifth time? Like, what is it? And I mean, you know, Morgan, you've, you've been on this, this weight loss journey. It's been a long time, right? Like you, I mean, five years you've been in isogenics, but the hundred pounds, like it's been a long time. And I don't, I'm, 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 I just, I want to have an, an open discussion and whether it's losing weight, whether it's a challenge that you put forth for yourself, whether it's, um, you Curtis there, whether it's, um, you know, a, a financial, um, goal that you've set for yourself, um, you know, everyone coming off of, of NYKO, I'm sure is asked to write down, you know, you got to write down your goals and when you're going to get to two star, when you're going to get to five star and you've got to enroll X number of people by this date, right? There's all these goals and objectives, but we know from doing personal development that there is no there, right? We, in our minds, we want to think once I get to a certain point, like I will have quote unquote arrived, I'll be there and then everything will be great. But what we find is that then we get there and it's like, well, what now? Right? Like what, what, what's next? And so for me, again, it's just important for me to just connect and be real and vulnerable and open with this isobody challenge. I'm getting some pretty darn good results because we have amazing products that they work. I know they work. So when I work using them, it's like, I've got abs, I've got shoulders. I have a tricep that's, I can, I can see it now. Right. But I'm here. I am in the middle of it and I'm asking questions of other people like, hmm, I don't know if I really want this. And so I'm hitting, you know, this, this, this phase of like, I, it's important for me, like when we get off that this has just come up today, that to, would get off this call, like this thing's getting filled out. Like the the reason why I'm not giving up on this one, number one is because I refuse to give up on me for the hundredth time. 
And when I talked it out this afternoon, it was like, that's my number one reason. Yes, I want to inspire people. Yes, I want to share these amazing products and what they can do for your health and do for your life. My number one reason is Chris. Like, I have a lifetime of giving up on myself and my goals and my, like, a lifetime of it. And I just, the garage that I'm working out in is freezing cold. It's back into the 30s. Like I feel, I'm feeling some pain in my body that makes me not want to get up and go. Like I'm, I'm hitting these walls. Um, so what's behind the why? What is behind your why? How are you guys doing? It's the new year. Everyone's setting resolutions, setting goals, coming off of the, you know New Year's kickoff. Like, how, what goals have you set? Are you finding yourself hitting you know a, a deception phase? Like, are you aware of it that it that it has shown up? You know, are you anchored in why those goals were important that you wrote them down in the first place. Like I completely forgot about the $25,000 that I have a really big plan for. And I actually eight weeks in had to be reminded that they were, I mean, well, I'll just say it. I was talking to Casey and she's like, well, I mean, there is the 25 grand and it's like, well, how could I have forgotten about that? right? Like, but it's not, I mean, we have vision boards. I've got vision boards behind me. I have them in front of me. You, you get out a 90 day, a 90 day game plan and they've got, you know, images of how important it is to make a vision board. Like it's everywhere. Right. But here's this challenge that I'm halfway through and I, I, I didn't, I didn't even write it down. Why is it important for me to win this thing? Um, and so anyway, I, let me, I want to open it up. I would love for you guys to share what are some of the goals, some of the commitments that you've made, um, whether it was last year, whether it's coming into 2018, how are you doing on them? If you are running into a deception phase right now, have you anchored yourself in why you're doing these things and written them down? Like, is that helpful or have you not? Is it something that you deserve to do, you know, like, like me? If anyone's willing to share. Hey, Chris. Hey, hey guys. Yay. I'm here. Finally. Well, you know, your words, Chris, made me think. So uh, my wife and I did some thinking over this weekend with NK, N NYKO, watching it on TV. And we said, you know, we have the system. I have everything in place. And imagine I'm not using it to the extent that I could. I'm using such a small part. Why do I do that? I have all these tools, amazing tools, you know, um, and I learned something this weekend. Isogenics is to me about transforming my body first. It's about me figuring that piece out. Um, and if you look at our system, our solution, it's about management. And I've been a very poor manager up until Isogenics. So, if I've taken, let's see here, I started Isogenics when I was 44, 40, yeah, 44. So I mismanaged my life for 44 years, okay? And I'm just gonna figure it out in a few years? No, it takes time. But with Isogenics, I have a system that I can go back to. And that's what I like. Um, so I worked out my math. So my first round with Isogenics, I started in August, uh, August, 2014, August 11th, actually the day that Robin Williams passed away. Um, 
and it took me 13 months to re to re and thankfully I have little markers in my room that, that show me that. And then for the last 28 months, I've gained back 60 of that hundred. Um, and now I'm restructuring. And so I said, what did I do right in that first 13 months? And you know what I did is I did the system as prescribed. I didn't do it Dave Stark style. And that's what I feel like we add is when we deal with our weight, well, I got this. And I've lost 100 pounds. I've got this. No, I don't. I need to go back to the basics. And, um, you know, I'm not a weight manager yet. I haven't completely got to my ideal weight and lived it that way for more than a year. Um, so my goal here is to restructure. Uh, right after this call, I'm getting on a healthy mind and body, and I'm uh, reloading. And I'm doing ice to body challenge. I'm reloading on that today. It's got my newspaper over here. I'm ready to go. And week challenge and like you I did open that 16 week book I looked at it but I never really filled it out so I'm going to fill it out um, you know my why is me now it was my daughter's originally but really it's me because I'm not going to be any good if, to my daughters if I'm not here so or my wife for that matter and so I deserve to figure this out and one of the things I've heard Lenny Evans say um, is we all deserve to figure it out right? Chris, your path is different than my path. Morgan, your path is different than my path. Yet the same thing is isogenics is the same system. You know, I once thought about entrepreneurs, you know, what do they eat? What, what does a Tony Robbins eat? What does a uh, Bill Gates eat? What did all these people that could have all the money in the world, what do they eat? Right? And they probably have personal chefs and all that. They still challenge finding out how to do what they do. But I figured, you know, I have what entrepreneurs eat, right? So there's no excuse. Um, and I'm going to figure this out. I deserve to figure this out. And isogenics is my system to figure this out. And then the, the next piece is transform your body and then transform your business. And it made me think about it. You know, I don't have to transform my business, but when I have a transformed body, it naturally transforms my business. But you got to figure the first piece out in order to get the second piece. And that's where I'm at. I'm still figuring out the first piece, even though I share it. I don't feel it's very impactful to whoever I'm coaching because I'm, I'm kind of, I'm more emotional about it because I haven't quite figured it out. So I'm not really quite confident that I'm steering somebody the right way, you know, because I'm not at my goal weight or I'm not at my ideal, but I've realized this guys is that it doesn't matter, right? My circle, you guys will never touch and I will never touch your circle of influence to impact however long it takes. And uh, Chris, thank you for putting all this together so we can share our weaknesses so that therefore we are strong in our weaknesses. We are strong, right? So, um, but that's what I have to say. Thank you so much. You know, I love that you said in the beginning it was about your daughters, but now it's about you um, because the why can change. And like, you know, we hear that all the time when we go to events, but it's like my why for isogenics when I started was to lose 40 pounds, right? Like now it's to win the isobody challenge. Um, like it, it'll change, you know, financially, my why is going to be different than all of yours. Like, you know, so, but why is it important? Like not, it's not just about, you know, the number of cycles that I say that are up on the board or the number of stars that I have behind my name, but like, why, why do I, what am I going to do when that comes true? Like, what will that money do for me? What will my health, when I lose that 60 pounds that I've put back on, do for me like it's if it's about you you know really connecting with it like emotionally that the you know book um feeling is the secret that i mean that's the whole premise is we have to be emotionally connected to like why are we doing this in the first place because otherwise our brains are just going to you know divert us right back to to what got us there and, you know, in, in the beginning. And so, um, 
thank you. I appreciate your, your share and, um, I'm holding you in, in support of your, of your goal and getting realigned and redirected as I hope you'll do for me <laughs> on, on, you know, really pushing through, um, this, this phase that I'm kind of going through right now. Um, who else has any goals that they want to share and kind of where you are with them right now? Hello. Hi. So, I don't know about goals. I, I have a couple of things to say. I, um, so, in YKO, they did like the connecting panel, and somebody came out and was, um, she made a comment about you don't have to, you know, like you go into personal development and isogenics and stuff, we start taking those little personality tests, or you do a college program with Rod Harrison, and you find out, well, you know, you're yellow, you're blue, you're green, you're like these certain things. And the lady was like, like, you know, be free to kind of like release yourself of those um, labels. Like a lot of times we get labeled with things. And so, or you think you're a certain way from childhood or something like that. And it's not that we don't want to, you know, know our personalities and know other team members' personalities, but don't be so quick to like label yourself in a, in a certain spot. And so I guess my point is, is it's just interesting this, topic tonight Chris and you calling me earlier with this kind of stuff about like well why and do I really want to win because so I went to NYKO and it was amazing and of course I had a different lanyard this time I got a hundred pound club lanyard to wear and so as soon as I got it and I walked out the area with it like I immediately got stopped by somebody and like oh my gosh you're in the hundred pound club can we do a live I want to interview you and I was just like you know, that, I don't know if that's me, you know, like it, it didn't feel right with my soul because that's not the person that I'm used to being. I'm the person who stays in the hotel room. I go into the room at the very last because I don't do big crowds well. And, you know, I, I, I want recognition for my hard work, but do I want this type of recognition? And like, you know, I look at Alvi and I see him going lines of people to take with him and people uncomfortable to even talk to him. And he's like the celebrity. And so it's, it was like this rush of like overwhelming emotions. And so I did this live with this girl and I know her and um, she interviewed me and it went really well and it was exciting. And I feel like I'm inspiring people, you know, and kind of like Peter Kelly's speech and stuff. It's just like, if it doesn't align, it's not making you happy, like putting on makeup and hair, like, you know, you still have to be true to you. And so for me, it's like from, I don't know who I was for the past 10, 15 years of my life until kind of now I just feel like I'm finding myself. So all these things coming in at once. And then, so I'm supposed to do this ice body challenge. And then, you know, what if they do pick me? Then what if I am on stage or what if I do have more of a following? Like I'm having trouble with the messages that are coming in just from me posting my before and after. So, you know, I guess just overwhelming and just trying to figure out, getting clear on that, the, the why and who I'm going to be serving. And there is that part of it too, you know, the, but I think I've almost shied away from it a little bit because I didn't know if I was capable of feeling, filling that type of a role, um, with my own self doubts and insecurities or, you know, what they're looking for. There's so many people like constantly, I'm just like, there's so many people in the eyes of body challenge, Morgan. I mean, how are they going to see you? It's like, and maybe those are those moments of, deception or things that I require to keep myself down to see if I can pull myself up. I mean, there's just so much that goes on in my head all, <laughs> every day with all this stuff that I'm working on. But, you know, I just, my goals right now is just to make sure that something thing, um, aligns with me and that it feels good and that I'm working towards being the best me I possibly each day. And she just said about Oprah with her book, she's like, and if they see my photos and they, my story and they love it and that I'm going to represent the company great this year or next year or whenever, that's great. And if not, then I'll just keep working on myself and doing what I need to know, do and knowing that the universe and God and alignment is all in perfect order and it will be done when it's needed, you know, without putting all that pressure on myself. So those are the goals and comments. Thank you. I'm bummed that your video was frozen, at least on my end, for a while ago. Okay. But I heard all of huh. your, I just didn't get to see your facial expressions, but I heard the, the audio came through. Yeah, you're moving around too much, maybe. It's like, slow down. <laughs> um, you know, 
you brought up such a good point about, um, well, two things. One is um, something that was brought to my attention this afternoon, you know, by Casey as well as comparison and how my reasons, my why, and my expectations of what's going to happen, you know, when I achieve the winner, um, they don't have to be like Alvi's. They won't be, right? Like I'm, I, I, I don't have to think of because I was thinking about all of the things that he does, kind of like in your like your interview, you know, like that's not that's not who I am, but that's okay. That it's like you can show up in whatever way you feel is is in alignment and is is right with you is a part of like who you are and as soon as you start to compare you know my goal against somebody else's is when you know the thoughts go down the toilet and and the well, why am i doing this and because I'm looking at other people. I'm getting in the ISA body challenge group and comparison. Well, she looks way stronger than I do. And well, how many challenges has she done? And I, I'm just being honest, you know, like, well, I, do you have to do a bunch of challenge? Can you win if you're on your first one? Or do you have to have done three of them first? Or I didn't have a white background on my picture. Are they going to pick her because you can see her muscles more than you can see mine because mine are in front of a lake and, I mean, all of these, you know, it was all comparison that it's like, if I get out of that and say, you know what, I know for me, this is why I want to do this. It's why it's important. And I know what the outcome looks like and why, why I desire that outcome. Then there, none of the other stuff exists. It's, it's like, Chris against Chris, right? There's a quote, I think I took it down now, but it was on my vision board for like two years of like, you know, the greatest competition you'll ever face is yourself. Um, so that was one of the things that was helpful for me. And that I thought about too in this group, that it's not about you lost 60, I lost 50, he lost a hundred. And, you know, like it's, it's, all of that should just go out the window. It's like, what are your goals for you? And why, you know, most importantly, why, like, are you rooted and anchored in why that's important for you? Not just that you've, you know, put a target out there, but why? Because you can hit it. Right. But like, what is it going to do for you when you hit it? Because until you get there is what, what I'm talking about now, like what I'm going through today, you know, Morgan, you were really honest with me, you know, this afternoon that it's like, there's some days it's just like, I just, I just, I know I've lost 108 pounds, but I don't feel like doing it today. And then tomorrow, and then I'm just going to take a week off, but next week I'm going to get back on it. And it's those little, you know, like how you, how are you doing on counting those macros, Chris? I was all over it for the first four weeks. Well, I kind of know how many carbs are in this. <laughs> I mean, it's like, no, like, because, but there's, it's easy for that to creep in. Um, so comparison, that was the first thing that you said, um, that, that struck a chord and um, shoot the other one just escaped me. You know, Chris, you uh, said something that um, made sense just here. So, you know, isogenics is a scientifically proven system followed a certain way and you'll get results. Why do we tweak it? Why do we, like a chef, we'll take it and make it our own? Why? It's like, it's scientifically proven. I'm not a scientist, you know? And I try to reinvent this thing. Oh, man, I could do that. I could, you know, I could cut here. I can add. I can, you know, I used to lie to myself after I released 100 pounds that I could eat anything I want. 
It's not true. I can eat anything I want to gain weight, but not to release it. And I, I told myself this, oh, yeah, I have this whole thing down. I can eat anything I want as long as it's in the middle of the day. All right. As long as I can work out before or after, I'm good. As long as I have it a shake around it. I have this whole lie. Yeah. Well, that lie added 60 pounds, right? Quick. Well, over 28 months. So really that one shake a day kept me from gaining 100 back. Um, but I'm going to go and I'm going to utilize, and I've been looking at the scientific thing that uh, uh, with Dr. The guy that did the prize thing, the protein timing, resistance, interval, strength, endurance. Do you guys, that scientific doc. So I'm going to use that document this time around with my, 16 week so that i can say to somebody how did you lose that hundred i'm going to say here's how i did it you know 60 day healthy mind and body iso body challenge the prize thing here's what i did here's my menu here's what i did versus right now i couldn't go back and tell you what i ate what i did how i did it i can tell you what i thought you know i meditated a lot more and i woke up one of the one of the things i did do in the first 13 months is the immediate when i got out of bed as i put on shoes and i worked out Whereas if I get a cup of coffee and I read and I try to do some mental stuff, it just doesn't work for me. So if I get up and I put my shoes on and I go in the cold garage, put on and do whatever, put on my hat and get my gloves. And it's not cold out here in California, but it's cold enough to make me not want to do it. And, you know, I know that I go in there with a focus. So that's, you know, kind of what I was thinking. I'm going to go back more to the scientific approach. You know, and then so that way when I'm off, I just go back to the scientific approach. So I figured I'd share that with you. Yeah. And I think, you know, like losing the weight, it, it, I mean, I just, I think it's the same as this, this, this ISA body challenge, you know, for me, it's the same as, as it was for getting that 40 pounds off. It's like, I, and I wrote about this in, in a, a chapter in a, a book that I wrote in too, is that I, I had what's called the angry talk with myself of like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you self-destructing? Why, when you know you've, you know, you lost a hundred, but you had the most invasive surgery you could have and you've gained back half of it. Like, why? Why are you doing that? And I had to get really clear on that because if I would have called, you know, I called up and start Isogenics, I mean, I could lose 40 pounds with Isogenics just like I lost 100 with gastric bypass. But I see people gain weight back, lose weight with Isogenics, gain weight, right? It's because, like, why is it important to you? Like, it has to be about something. Otherwise, Right. Like that, that our normal, our normal thought patterns just take, take right back over. And like when it comes to eating and weight, you know, every single, every single day you get on a call with somebody and they say, we say, well, what are your goals? Let's talk a little bit about what your goals are. Well, I want to lose about 40 or 50 pounds, you know, okay, great. Here's the system you should start with. And, you know, here are the products and, um, and it's kind of laid out, but I, I miss that part a lot in talking with people to say like, why, why do you want to lose 60 pounds? Well, cause I'm tired all the time. And because I want to be able to, today I heard someone say, you know, because I've got six grandkids, I want to get on the floor and play with my grandkids. Morgan, you did a video a couple Christmases ago and said like, I, I can't, I just can't do this anymore. Like I need to be able to play with my son and, and be able to move around and like to be able to connect with that emotion behind the why. Um, when it, I, I, I'll just, I'll be real and honest when it comes to money, you know, I grew up in a family that, I mean, we didn't have all the money in the world, like money, you know, money doesn't grow on trees, right? Like we're, it's, it's, we're struggling to bring together enough money and abundance was not like a thing in my family. Like that this is something that we all deserve and it's there for you and it's everywhere. And like, that was not a thing. So 
what is financial freedom? Like I've got, you know, I am like, what does that mean? It can be all over my house, all over my boards, but like, what does, what does it really mean to be financially free? Like, what will I do with a million dollars? Morgan, I mean, you talked about in the business, you're like, God, like, had I, had I gotten everything all at once, like, I wouldn't have been ready for it. Like, you don't even, if you don't know why something's important, it's, it's, it's just not going to stick. Um, and so that's another one that I'm working on, you know, is, is financial blueprint. Like, well, why? Why is it important? You know, why should I believe that that I can have all the money that I need, you know? Why should I believe that I can, there's gotta be one winner of the Ice of Body Challenge. One person has to win. Why is it important for it to be me? You know, and if, and then like, according to, you know, what we talked about last, on last week's call about changing your mind, maybe later I'm also free to say, I changed my mind. I don't want to be the winner. <laughs> I mean, that's okay too. If that's, if that's the truth, if that's what I'm, if I no longer align with that goal, then it can be about, I just really want to get my body into the best shape that it's ever been. I want to be in the best health that I've ever been. And it's not about winning. I don't care about the $25,000 anymore, right? Like I'm, I'm free to change my mind. But I think what's important is the awareness of the fact that like, I forgot about the $25,000. That's how much I didn't feel like getting up today and doing the do. I literally, I like forgot why this was even important. I called Morgan. I'm like, why am I, even, why am I doing this? Do I even want this? Like an entire conversation, you know? And I had, I had, I had to ask the question. I didn't know because I, I hadn't written it down. I hadn't can really connected with it emotionally. I put it out there, but like it wasn't anchored. Um, anybody else have any goals that you want to talk about? Anything that you've been working on? Are you hitting any deception phases trying to push through? It's funny you just use that analogy of the anchor and, um, you know, but you think about an anchor, if it's not anchored, what is it going to do? It's going to drift off. It's going to go wherever the wind blows it, literally. <laughs> so I love that being, you know, anchored in why you're doing things and really bringing in the emotion because that's what ties it all in. And I still really, really, really struggle with that. Just bringing in the emotion of it, just because it's part of our imagination, you know, and, you know, where we can wander and dream. And, you know, some people are better at dreaming than others. I'm such like a little, little, literal person that it's like, you know, I can see why my son is so black and white because I'm so black and white. It's like, it's hard to be, you know, I don't even remember as a kid, like being able to sit there with characters and play. That's like, I don't even know where I got off on this tangent, but <laughs> that's what I'm talking about. You know, just playing with Ariana because she's like, her imagination is going everywhere. And, um, you know, and I, I think I've talked to you about this, Chris, but it's just, it's, it's hard for me to do. And so to be able to connect the emotion to my goals, you know, like I want to become executive, like, you know, that's a huge goal of mine, but it's like, why, you know, what emotion that ties that? Well, because I got 10 people to sign up two people. But that's exciting. Yeah. <laughs> What that like? What well, yeah? Okay, like then you hit it, and you're like, hmm. You know, I think about like Rod Hairston um, in Hilton Head. He said, yeah, you know, the the story about when he got a phone call from his accountant saying that he had made a million dollars, his first million dollars, 
And he said he was so disappointed because he's like, I just <laughs> gonna feel I so thought different. I was going to feel different. <laughs> he's like, I didn't, I didn't feel like I had made a million dollars. And it was kind of like, okay, like now there's tomorrow. Right. And it's like, that's what I mean. It's like, there's no, if there's no emotion, like as we go through to kind of keep pulling us there, um, I kind of by accident, uh, the other day was daydreaming about having a conversation with Kathy Coover because I had been chosen as the winner and we were just at some dinner, just chatting, just talking. And I don't know where it came from, but I, I recognized a little bit later on that I, had, that I had had that thought, that I was like, hmm, that was weird. I was just thinking about. But I didn't connect with, like, I made myself go back and was like, okay, let's do that again, but let's actually deposit, like, major emotion about, like, this is, like, this is really happening. Like, how does it feel to be out of however many thousands of people are competing? How does that feel to be that you were chosen? Like, what is that like? And then we were just talking like we were buds. Mm -hmm. Like, hey, come on, you know, what's on your salmon? I don't know. You know, like, it was, it was just like a regular convert, but I wasn't feeling it. I was just like, I had the thoughts, but I didn't have the emotion behind it. And so, you know, that's really what I'm going to be challenging myself to do. And, um, you know, again, it's why I like pulled out this journal is like, I am just, a, a perfect example of, you know, today, of what happens when you're not anchored, when you're not emotionally connected to why you're doing something. And, you know, you can, you can have success that's measured by pounds, you know, that's measured by the scale, that's measured by your bank account, that's measured by all these different things. Um, but, that feeling of fulfillment, of true, you know, joy, bliss, fulfillment comes from the, the process, the journey, right? Like enjoying it, like during, like, oh, I'm doing this because I'm connected to why this is important. What am I going to do when this thing happens? What will be the next thing? Um, and so I, I love that too. I, I've struggled with imagination. I think about Dave MacArthur, um, that I think it was at the first was David, where you and I first met, where he talked about the three by five cards and he's like, take it with you everywhere and like, feel it, you know, when you read it, like, to, like be connected with it at all times. Like I should be connected as soon as I wake up to whatever, whatever my goals are, that if something is, you know, is not in alignment with the isobody challenge, you know, optimum health, my, whatever financial goals I've set for my, if it's not in alignment with that, then it shouldn't be in my day. I think that's, I mean, I wasn't there for Peter Kelly's talk, but I think that's, from what I've heard, that's kind of what she talked about is like, I mean, you know, Morgan, you said like, if, if putting makeup on doesn't align with you then don't buy any makeup, you know, last week I talked to, we talked about changing our minds and it's like going through the closet. Like that's, that jacket is what I, I liked in like five years ago, but I don't like it anymore. <laughs> So why is it still in my closet? Like, why am I still hanging on to that? If I'm not, you know, if it's not in alignment. Um, so we're coming up on time. You know, we have a, we have a team call at nine o'clock. Um, Aljanat, Curtis, do either, either of you want to chime in? Well, I, I can tell you that what you're talking about, 
tonight about your why. I can relate to that because I'm having some other issues with some things, but it's just, um, I, I think the why does grow on you when your, your goals do change. And mine initially started out as specifically financial, but it changed into, I mean, not specifically financial, but it was initially helping people for sure. And it evolved into different formats as I am going through my journey. And I'm not, it's not locked down right now still, but I know exactly what my goals are, but my why is changing within my goal. I, I guess it's kind of conflicting for me a little bit right now, but as time goes on, it, it's just, it just changes because you evolve so much in this process. And I think it's just you selling, selling your thoughts down and just, like you said before, reconnecting with yourself and finding out what exactly you want to do as you go along through your journey. It just, it just changes. I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but just a personal growth, I think, as well as the evolution of what your journey is, if that makes any sense. It makes, I overstand. It makes perfect sense. When I first, you guys, I, when I first heard Peter Kelly talking about like writing down your why, I had never in my life even asked myself what I wanted. What are the things that excite you? I was like, I don't know. Like I just get up and go to work. Like that's, that's what I thought everybody did. Like I, I didn't even know what it was. And so it's so important to, you know, give yourself the, the grace of, you know, allowing yourself time. If you don't know what it is right now, I didn't know what mine was. I still, I still work on mine. Why am I doing this? What do I want? You know, it's more than the, I want this house. I want this car. You know, I want like, no, like fulfillment wise, like, what do I want out of like my purpose in life? Like, how, how do I want to show up for the rest of the years, you know, that I'm here? And that's, that takes a lot of consideration of, of questioning and, and thinking. So I, I appreciate that you, that you brought that up because it will change over time. You know, Casey talks all the time about how like originally she's like, I wanted to bring my husband, I wanted to make enough money that he could retire. Well, that happened. So it's like, well, what's your, why going to be now? What's your new one? I mean, like it's going to evolve. And, and, that's, and I'm in my very early stages. And I, and I suspect that that would change, like you just stated several times over. But right now, it's, it's just soaking everything up and trying to understand where I'm at on, on my own personal level. So mm -hmm. it's, it's just so many, that, so many facets in that, in that change and in that why. I'm just... I'm not trying to pinpoint one thing like I was earlier. I'm just allowing it to flow. So I'll change with my why and accept it and, and keep going and not put the pressure on myself for someone else. Because I was putting pressure initially at one point for a goal, and that goal really didn't align with how I felt. And it made my why, throw my why off, and it threw my balance off as well. So... I am trying to let the why flow in a direction where it doesn't go against me, but still in align with some of the, the values or well, the values that I want or some of the things I want to accomplish and in my values as well. So it's just it's a lot to take in. Even yeah. when you think you like you said, have it mastered, you you really don't. And I don't, I don't think you can master your why because it just it just changes too much. Yeah, I think, you know, for some people like Jordan Dickerson is a great example of someone who it's, you know, something life or death, you know, when you're in the hospital and you're facing death, I mean, that's a why that you can really emotionally attach to, right? Like you, like you carry that story of if, you know, if I don't continue this journey or start this journey of health, like it's a life or death situation. And it, that's the case for a lot of people. Um, I know, especially if you, you know, if you're looking to lose a hundred pounds, it's life or death. I mean, I was being told you're, you're pre this, you're pre that you're going to, you're not going to live 
very long, you're going to die early. I mean, all of that. Um, but it's real easy to forget that, you know, when you're not connecting with it emotionally on a regular basis. Um, and I, th I think he, he yeah. does a great job. He's a great example of, of really communicating, you know, his story and why, why it's important for him to share um, this company, these amazing products, you know, and, and what they can do for your life. So, um, guys, I know we're up on time. Um, so I just want to thank you all for, for showing up and for participating and, um, much, much luck and blessings to you as you knock those goals out for 2018 and be sure to write down what's behind that. Why emotionally attached to it. Um, and we'll see you guys next Monday. You too. Thanks, Chris. All right. Good night. Good night.